Today on The Young and the Restless Sally Has a Medical Crisis, Elena bumps into Nate and Victoria, and Cameron terrorizes Sharon. At the athletic club, Victoria tells Nate how she stood her ground with her family about Nick kicking a leave of absence. He cautions her about sharing everything with him, but she reveals he's the one she hopes to lean on. Nate's honored that she wants to lean on him. Victoria recaps how well they work together. Nate asks if Nick is definitely taking a leave of absence. Victoria says her parents don't want to call it that but that's what it is. He'll need to back her up. Nate is there to support her, whatever she needs. Victoria tells him he's exactly what she and Newman needs. Nate respects and admires her and he cares about her. His attraction is as much mental as it is physical. At Crimson Lights, Billy orders at the counter while Chelsea calls Adam from the patio. She tells him they need to find someone professional for Connor to talk to. He's been moody and distant. Adam tells her he'll call in the morning and they'll get him the best therapist in the state. Chelsea thanks him and disconnects. Billy returns to the table with food and Chelsea tells Billy he can take off. She can face Connor's rejection alone. Just then, Connor appears in the doorway. In Sally's suite, she awakens and asks Adam if Nick called. He says it was Chelsea. Sally can't sleep and has to get out of that room. Adam mourns, you're not going anywhere. Sally tells him he can't keep her there. She wants something to eat and is sick of room service. She knows Nick told him something about what that Cameron guy is up to, and that's why he's watching her so closely. He would not have asked to talk to him if it wasn't bad. Adam says he's just concerned about her. Sally fumes at Adam to stop treating her like a child. He hollers that she might want to put her shoes on. She asks Adam to tell her what's going on with Nick. Not knowing is making her think the worst. In Sharon's house, she asks Cameron, How did you get in here? Cameron found a workaround to avoid Victor's security. Sharon says she was on her way to meet him. She asks, Where is Faith? Cameron muses about them finally being alone and how beautiful she is, while he's not aged as well, but is still ruggedly handsome. He tells her she became a part of him in jail. Just like I'm a part of you. Sharon says, tell me where Faith is. Cameron says she's fine. For now, what happens next? That's up to you. He walks over and locks the door. Sharon asks Cameron what he's after. He says, the same thing I've always wanted, you. Sharon tells him, let's talk. He strokes her face and croons that he wants more than a conversation. Sharon asks what it will take to get Faith back. Cameron wants her to leave with him tonight and agree to spend the rest of her life with him. Sharon points out the last time he tried this it didn't end well. Cameron blames Nick, but he's not here now. He talks about their connection. Sharon says she can't be free to think about them until she knows Faith is okay. Cameron says he'd never hurt her daughter, unless he had to. Sharon can't consider his request until Faith is safe. Cameron knows she's trying to get into his head and suggests, look into my heart. Sharon tells him to look into her heart. It's too full of love for her daughter for her to concentrate on him. Wildfires, hurricanes and floods. Climate change already hitting U.S., according to new U.N. study. Cameron thinks Sharon has resigned herself to being alone because every man let her down. None of them loved her the way he does. He wants her more than anything he's ever wanted in his life and 20 years in prison didn't change that. I tried to let you go, but no other woman was you. Sharon heard he beat a woman just like he beat her. Abuse isn't love. Hitting someone isn't love. Cameron says he feels things more deeply and acts accordingly. Sharon raises her voice as she asks about Faith again. Cameron backs her into a wall as he says it was the only way to get her attention. He believes they belong together. This is real. And this is unstoppable. At the GCAC, Nate tells Victoria he's confident Audra can look after Newman Media while he helps her. Victoria knows exactly who Audra is and has no professional issue with her. She'll need to have her wits about her since Adam plans to come after them with McCall. Nate and Victoria want to ensure McCall never gets strong enough in the first place. In Sally's suite, she searches for her hidden shoes as she and Adam argue about him refusing to tell her details about Nick. She wants out of there so she doesn't have to think about it. Adam tells her she's impossible and they strike a deal. She tells him he's buying dinner. Adam produces her shoes from the trash bin where he'd hid them. On Crimson Light's patio, Connor hopes his mom's not mad at him for shutting himself in his room. 
She's not mad and is glad he came to find her. They embrace. At Sharon's place, Cameron tells her he has enough money stashed away for them to live the rest of their lives in luxury. Sharon has everything she wants there. Cameron scoffs. You're better than that. Sharon can't understand why he thinks they have a future. Cameron's sole purpose in life is to make her happy. He'll never let her down the way Nick has. Nick is the problem. He's the reason for your unhappiness. Sharon bellows, if you really care about me, prove to me that faith is okay. Cameron becomes agitated. He doesn't want to talk about anyone other than the two of them. If anyone becomes a distraction, he'll remove them. At the GCAC, Nate tells Victoria they should go after McCall's weaknesses first. He made a list. Victoria says they should put Audra on it. She teases that Adam's the weakest link. As they laugh and chat, Elena walks in and spots them. At society, Sally and Adam peruse the menu for something safe for her to eat. She frets about not having heard from Nick, before talk turns back to the baby. Adam says as long as she has the best of Sally and his mother, she'll be perfect. Sally wants her to inherit the best of him too, and everyone in the family tree, maybe even Victor. They both look at each other and shake their heads no. At Sharon's place, she hollers at Cameron that threatening her daughter's life isn't love. Cameron becomes livid and kicks the ottoman. Stop pushing me. How dare you treat me like this when I'm standing in front of you opening a vein. Sharon taunts that Nick and Chance will be there any minute. Victor's security team is crawling all over the property. There is no way out for you. Cameron tells her Nick's not coming. He called him after he left the house and told him he had 20 minutes to get to where Faith is, so I wouldn't expect him to show up any time soon to rescue you. I think he understood the urgency. Sharon looks dismayed. What if he doesn't get there in time? Cameron muses. Well, let's hope he doesn't let you down again. He knows Chance is going through the abandoned garage and half of Victor's team will have gone with Nick. Sharon realizes he set them up to find the deed to the abandoned property in his room. Cameron says he knew that Chance would have to follow the lead. He confirms that the message about meeting him at the hotel was designed so Chance or Nick would leave ahead of her to get set up. Sharon concludes, leaving me alone in the house. Cameron has had this in the works for months. You said I was trapped but the truth is there's no way out of this for you. Sharon will do whatever he wants. Just please let Faith go. At the GCAC, Elena walks up and says, Well, isn't this cozy? Nate hopes she won't make a scene like she did in Leia Elena scoffs that was back when she was stupid enough to love and even respect him. She turns to Victoria and says, I always thought you were smart, but here you are falling for two users in a row. First Ashland and now his best man. Victoria doesn't see the similarity. Elena smiles, I guess that's your blind spot, but I can see it clearly. They're both happy to be with you as long as they get what they want, but as soon as they don't, watch out. At Crimson Lights, Billy assures Connor that he and Johnny understand that people get a short fuse sometimes. Chelsea asks her son if he can tell them what's going on. Billy wonders if it has to do with the baby. Connor nods but says he's getting used to the idea that he'll have a sister. Chelsea assures him he doesn't have to go through this alone. She broaches the idea of talking to a professional. Connor blurts, No. I don't need anyone else. I just need you. He hugs her. At society, Adam is wondering if Sally might consider the name Hope for the baby. Sally knows that would mean a lot to him. Adam says it would, and if it can't be her first name, perhaps it could be her middle name. Sally will add it to the list, but is superstitious and doesn't want to decide now. Adam assures her the kid is blessed. Just then, Sally yells out, doubles over, and grimaces. Adam asks, What is it? Sally doesn't know. At Sharon's place, Cameron says he'll let Faith go as soon as they've left Geno City. Sharon will go with him, but he has to promise her daughter will be okay. Cameron says he'd never hurt her child. Sharon wants to know where they're going so she knows what to pack. Cameron tells her he'll buy her all new things and plants a kiss on her. Suddenly, Nick appears and declares, she's not going anywhere with you. Get your hands off her. Grunting and thrown punches ensue as Sharon screams, Nick. Sharon pulls Nick away but Cameron slugs him and they go at it again. Sharon runs to the door and hollers for security as Kirsten knocks Nick out. Cameron bellows, I have your child, Sharon, and takes off. Nick scrambles up from the floor, dazed, and follows him. At the GCAC, 
Victoria knows Elena is saying mean things because she's hurt. In time the pain will fade and then maybe she won't feel the need to assault people in public. Elena giggles and tells Victoria she's been a Newman princess for too long if she thinks that was an assault. Those were just facts. Nate asks Elena not to do this. Elena can see their future. They're going to use each other up and then burn each other down to the ground. It's gonna be really fun to watch. At Crimson Lights, Connor is ready to go to bed and tells him mother he can go up himself. He pecks his mom's cheek and exits. Chelsea says to Billy, Why am I more worried now than ever? At society, Adam leaps up and helps Sally stand as he says he's taking her to the hospital. As she frets, he assures her everything is going to be okay. At Sharon's place, Nick comes in and says Cameron got away. He made a hole in the closet of Noah's old room. Sharon gasps. Nick says he tunneled under the house. That's how he came in, poisoned the cat, planted the bug, and got her alone. Sharon panics that Cameron knows she despises him and is headed to Faith right now. We've got to stop him. At the GTAC, Nate apologizes for the way Alina treated Victoria. She knows what happened felt like a punch to the gut. Now she's free to find the right person. Nate does wish that for her. He takes Victoria's hands, because I know what that feels like now. I'm exactly where I want to be. Elena arrives at the hospital and is decompressing from her run-in with Nate and Victoria when Adam appears with Sally. She asks her about her symptoms. Sally has a headache and pain in her right side. Adam says her doctor told her she was at risk for preeclampsia. Sally pleads with Elena to help her and her baby.